Asiatic Black Bears Conservation in Taiwan. This introductory show and corresponding lesson are brought to you thanks to the generosity of these fine sponsors. Asiatic black bears are one of eight bear species worldwide. We also have spectacled bears, polar bears, panda bears, sloth bears, brown bears, American black bears, and sun bears. The Asiatic black bear is also known as the moon bear. Can you guess why? The Asiatic black bear is slightly smaller than its sister species, the American black bear. Asiatic black bears are highly efficient climbers and they spend much of their time foraging high in the trees. Asiatic black bears are omnivores and their diet varies by season. They eat mainly succulent green vegetation in spring, soft mast like fruits during summer, nuts and acorn during fall and winter, and they also consume a variety of animal matter. Asiatic black bears construct platforms from branches and vegetation upon which they feed and sometimes rest. Now only the Asiatic black bears that live in the northern cold climates will den up all winter long. Those bears living in the southern warmer areas do not. Females in cold and warm areas use nests for birthing and often these nests are in hollow trees. The breeding season is in summer. One to three cubs are born in the dens at the end of winter. The lifespan of Asiatic black bears in the wild is on average between 20 and 30 years. Now doing research on Asiatic black bears increases our understanding of bear ecology. And we also do research on these bears to understand how best to conserve their populations. Where do Asiatic black bears live? Their historic range extended from Iran to Japan, so all of the areas in purple. The areas in red represent where these bears have already gone extinct. The areas in yellow represent the places where their presence is currently unknown. The Asiatic black bear has been listed as vulnerable by the IUCN since 1990. The IUCN estimates that between 30 and 49 percent of Asiatic black bears have been lost in the last 30 years, and this species is declining in most parts of its range. Why? Let's take a look at the threats to Asiatic black bears. Habitat degradation is one of the major threats. In some areas, deforestation destroys viable Asiatic black bear habitat every year. The exponential growth of the human population can further drive demand for development, sometimes causing more habitat degradation. Illegal hunting is another major threat. Many bears get captured for bushmeat. In China and Southeast Asia, a major threat to these bears is the commercial trade in live bears and bear parts, especially gallbladders for the bear bile. Bear bile is considered by some to be curative for many human ailments. It is illegal in most countries to hunt, kill, and capture Asiatic black bears. Even so, it can be really difficult in some areas to enforce these laws due to limited funding and for other reasons too. Okay, let's switch gears a bit. Think about all that is needed for wild Asiatic black bear populations to persist over time. First, they need habitat, right? Okay, well, what is habitat? Habitat is the place where an animal or population of animals live. Habitat provides all the resources an animal or population needs to survive and reproduce. What resources do Asiatic black bears need to survive and reproduce? Well, remember, we've already learned a bit about this. We know that their diet varies by season. They eat primarily acorns, nuts, succulent green vegetation, fruits, and some animal matter. They construct platforms from branches and vegetation, which they use for resting and feeding. They need tree hollows for birthing dens, and like all other animals, Asiatic black bears need water. 
Dr. Mei Huang is a scientist who is keenly interested in Asiatic black bears and the habitat they need. For one of her field studies, she wanted to find out if Yushan National Park is sufficiently big enough to provide habitat for a subspecies of Asiatic black bears called Formosan black bears. Now the Formosan black bear is currently endangered. Dr. Huang's study was the first ever done on Asiatic black bears using satellite tracking. And her study was the first bear capture study ever done in Taiwan. Let's take a look at the study site. Where is Yushan National Park? It's located in Taiwan. Let's take a closer look at Taiwan. There's Yushan National Park. Let's take a closer look at Yushan National Park, too. Yushan National Park is home to the tallest mountain in Taiwan called Jade Mountain. This park is designated as an ecologically protected area and it has resident Formosan black bears. Human activity is limited throughout the park. Inside Yushan Park, there's an area called Daffin. There it is. Do you remember reading about Daffin in the story that corresponds with this introductory video? Now Daffin has an extraordinarily high concentration of oak trees, and bears are often found here during fall. Can you guess why? Here's what Daffin looks like. Now the terrain throughout Yushan National Park, including in Daffin, is extremely rugged and very few trails exist in this park. Just to reach the study site took Dr. Huang and her crew three to four days of hiking. Now it's generally believed that protected areas like Yushan National Park serve a crucial role in conserving Formosan black bears. However, data on the habitat needs and spatial requirements for this bear subspecies had been virtually non-existent before Dr. Huang did her research. So, no one really knew if the size of Yushan National Park was adequate to support the Formosan black bears. Let's take a look at some of Dr. Huang's research hypotheses. Hypothesis 1a. Yushan National Park is large enough to support the resident Formosan black bears. Okay, we need to come up with a prediction for this hypothesis. That is, if this hypothesis is correct, then what would we predict to find from our data? Well, one prediction could be home ranges for bears will exist completely within Yushan National Park. Okay, now there's an alternative competing hypothesis to hypothesis 1A. Can you name it? Hypothesis 1B, Yushan National Park is not large enough to support the Formosan black bears. And a corresponding prediction to this alternative competing hypothesis, home ranges for bears will include areas outside Yushan National Park. Why is testing this hypothesis important? Because if it turns out that some bears living inside the park travel outside, then these endangered bears are not as, we, as protected as we think. That's because bears that travel outside the park are relatively more susceptible to poaching. Now, Dr. Huang was also interested in gaining insight into habitat use by these bears. So she looked at another set of hypotheses. Let's take a look. Hypothesis 2A. Because bears use different foods during different seasons, and because bear foods are found seasonally at different elevations, bears will use different elevations seasonally. Now, a corresponding prediction could be habitat use for different elevations by bears will differ among seasons. The alternative competing hypothesis, bears will not use different elevations seasonally. And the corresponding prediction to hypothesis 2b, habitat use for different elevations by bears will not differ among seasons. We'll be taking a closer look at these hypotheses and predictions in the lesson that corresponds with this video. Let's take a look at some of the methods. Dr. Huang and her team captured bears using snares or barrel traps, and then they darted them with the safe anesthetic. 
The bears were weighed, ear-tagged, measured, and collared with a VHF radio or GPS collar. Then the collared bears were set free at the capture site. The research team tracked each bear mostly by foot across the extremely rugged terrain using telemetry receivers. Sometimes they used a helicopter to track the bears. To analyze bear movement data, Dr. Huang used three seasons defined by when seasonally available bear foods were present. Now it's important to recognize that the number of bears Dr. Huang and her team were able to capture and track was small relative to many bear studies done in the U.S. and in Europe. For example, Dr. Huang was able to capture 15 bears for the study, and she was able to use 10 of those bears for analyses. For many studies in the U.S. and in Europe, scientists capture and analyze at least 30 bears. Now we'll talk more about sample size and sample size issues in the lesson that corresponds with this video. For now, let's look at this question. Why was Dr. Huang's sample size of bears relatively small? Well, that's a great question. Here's some answers. One, Asiatic black bears exist in really low density, so it's difficult to even find bears. Asiatic black bears are very wary, so it's difficult to capture bears. And the terrain in the study area is extremely rugged, so it's difficult to track bears. Remember, the research crew had to hike three to four days just to reach the study area. That's how rugged the terrain is. Now doing research on Asiatic black bears is further complicated by the fact that historically there's been relatively little funding for research on Asiatic black bears. Let's take another look at this map, only this time let's look at the relative funding that has been allocated to different bear species worldwide. For these four bear species, brown bears, American black bears, polar bears, and panda bears, there's been more funding relative to the amount of funding that has historically been allocated to research on the other four bear species. So that means for these four bear species, spectacled bears, sun bears, sloth bears, and the Asiatic black bear, there's been less funding relative to the amount of funding that has historically been allocated to research on those other four species. Here's a fast fact. There are so few Asiatic black bears and so little funding dedicated to studying these animals that scientists today don't have an estimate for how many of these bears exist worldwide. What we do know is the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species lists the Asiatic black bear as vulnerable and declining. So it's easy to see why Dr. Huang's study on this vulnerable species is so important. And remember, one research goal is to understand habitat needs, because we'll use this information to help conserve populations of wild Asiatic black bears. Would you like to see a wild Asiatic black bear now? You will use real data from one of Dr. Huang's studies to create home ranges for wild bears and answer this question. Is Yushan National Park large enough to support Formosan black bears? You will also evaluate habitat use and selection by these wild bears. Are you ready? Let's get started. This concludes the introductory video for the lesson plan called Asiatic Black Bears Conservation in Taiwan. The lesson plan and story that corresponds with this show are available for free download at Bear Trust International's website. Please visit us at www.beartrust.org. Thank you.